small village called Udali, there lived a woman named Udoma. She was known throughout the village for her kindness and the magical pot she owned. This was no ordinary pot, it had the power to bring back the dead. Whenever someone in the village was sick or had passed away, Udoma would use her pot, and miraculously, they would return to life, healthy and happy. The villagers loved Udoma for her good deeds. They believed she was a blessing to their community, sent by the gods to protect them. Every time a miracle happened, they would dance and sing, thanking Udoma and her magic pot. However, Udoma held a deep secret that no one in the village knew about. While her pot could restore life, it also had another power, a darker one. Every time Udoma saved someone with the pot, she would secretly take something very precious from them, their destiny. The magic pot would transfer the person's good fortune to Udoma, making her stronger and more powerful. Udoma knew this was wrong, but the temptation was too great. She loved feeling powerful and important. As the years went by, she collected the destinies of many villagers, and her own fate seemed to shine brighter than ever. One day, a curious young boy named Chike began to suspect something. He noticed that even though people came back to life, they seemed different afterward. They were healthy, yes, but their eyes lacked the sparkle they once had. Chike decided to watch Udoma more closely. As Chaik spied on Udoma from behind a bush one evening, he saw her performing the ritual with her magic pot. He watched in amazement as a soft light left the body of a sick man and was absorbed by the pot. The man woke up, healed and oblivious to what had just happened. Chaik knew he had discovered Udoma's secret. But what should he do? Could he confront Udoma by himself, or should he tell the other villagers? He was just a boy, and Udoma was respected and powerful. Chike was afraid, but he also knew that this secret was too important to keep to himself. As Chike pondered his next steps, Udoma continued her rituals, unaware that her secret was no longer safe. Chike wrestled with his thoughts all night. By morning, he had made up his mind to confide in his grandmother, Neka, who was known for her wisdom and fairness. Carefully, he explained everything he had seen, hoping she would believe him. Neka listened quietly, her face showing no emotion. When Chike finished, she sighed deeply. Chike, this is a heavy secret for such young shoulders, she said softly. But I believe you. We must think carefully about what to do next. We cannot accuse you, Doma, without more proof. The villagers love her, and they might not listen to us. Neka and Chike agreed to gather more evidence. Over the next few days, they discreetly spoke to other villagers, particularly those who had been healed by Udoma's pot. Slowly, they started to notice a pattern. While everyone was grateful for being healed, they also shared feelings of unexplained emptiness, as if something within them was missing. Meanwhile, Udoma felt a strange unease. She sensed that the balance of her powers was shifting. Her pot, once vibrant and responsive, now seemed slightly dimmer each time she used it. She wondered if the pot's magic was waning or if her secrets were beginning to weigh it down. One evening, as Udoma prepared for another healing, she caught sight of Chaika Neka talking earnestly with some of the villagers near the marketplace. A pang of worry shot through her. Could they be discussing her? She shook the thought away and focused on her task, but a seed of doubt was planted in her mind. Back at his home, Chaik felt the burden of his secret growing. He knew something had to be done soon. He and Neka decided that the next time Udoma performed a healing, they would gather the villagers and confront her. The day came quicker than expected. A young man had fallen from a tree and was severely injured. As the villagers called for Udoma, Chike and Neka prepared to unveil the truth. Hearts pounding, they watched as the crowd formed around Udoma and her magic pot. As Udoma began the ritual, Chike stepped forward, Neka by his side. Wait, he cried out, causing the villagers to turn in surprise. There is something you all must know about the magic pot and what it really does. The village fell silent, all eyes on Chike and then slowly turning towards Udoma, waiting for her response. Udoma looked at the faces around her, each filled with confusion and curiosity. She knew the moment of truth had come, and what she chose to do next would change everything. Udoma took a deep breath, her heart racing as she weighed her options. She could deny everything, but looking into the expectant faces of her villagers, she felt the weight of her guilt. Maybe it was time for the truth. Chike is right, she began, her voice barely a whisper. 
There's more to the pot than you know. The villagers gasped and murmurs began to spread. Udoma knew she had to explain everything, no matter the consequences. As she prepared to reveal her secret, the air was thick with tension and the village of Udali braced for the shocking truths that were about to unfold. Udoma stood before her fellow villagers, each of whom looked back at her with a mixture of shock, curiosity and a hint of betrayal. She took another deep breath, steadying herself to continue. The pot, she began, her voice stronger now, it does bring back your loved ones, heal your sick, but it also takes something in return. A collective murmur rose among the crowd. Eyes widened and whispers spread like wildfire. Udoma could feel their confusion and fear but knew she had to finish what she had started. It takes a part of the person's destiny, their potential, their future joys, and it gives them to me, she admitted. Her eye scanned the crowd, meeting the gaze of those she had healed, who now looked back at her with a dawning understanding and sadness. I never meant for it to start this way, but once I realized what was happening, the temptation of the power it gave me was too strong. There was silence, then an old man stepped forward. Why, Udoma? Why betray our trust? Udoma's shoulders slumped, the weight of her secrets finally bearing down on her. I was afraid, she confessed. Afraid of growing old and weak, afraid of being helpless. This pot, it promised me strength and security. I thought if I was strong, I could protect you all better. But I see now the cost was too high. Neka, with a sympathetic yet stern look, joined Udoma in the center of the gathering. What is done is done, she said to the crowd. We must decide how to move forward. Udoma has wronged us, but she has also confessed and helped many in need. The villagers murmured among themselves, grappling with the revelation and its implications. Some spoke of forgiveness, while others felt betrayed and demanded justice. As the debate grew heated, Chike, who had been quietly observing, spoke up. Maybe there is a way to fix this, he suggested. Everyone turned to listen. What if the pot can give back what it took? What if Udoma can reverse the spells? All eyes then turned back to Udoma. She pondered Chike's idea. The magic of the pot was deep and ancient, but perhaps there was a way to restore what had been taken. I? I do not know if it will work, she said cautiously. But I am willing to try, to undo what I have done, if you are willing to give me the chance. The villagers were silent as they considered this. The idea of having their destinies returned was appealing and offered a path to healing the wounds of betrayal. Finally, the village elder spoke, his voice resonant and commanding attention. Let this be a lesson to us all about the dangers of unchecked power and the value of transparency, he declared. Udoma will attempt to restore what was taken. During this time, she will be watched closely by a council, including Chike and Neka, to ensure she fulfills her promise. Udoma nodded, accepting the terms gratefully. The task would not be easy, and the road to redemption long. But for the first time in many years, she felt a true sense of purpose that wasn't tainted by deceit. As the villagers dispersed, discussions continued into the night, a community shaken but taking its first steps toward healing. Meanwhile, Udoma prepared for the most important task of her life, wondering about the magic's reception and the true depth of her pot's powers, which she was about to test. The next morning, under the watchful eyes of Neka, Chaik, and a few appointed villagers, Udoma began her preparations. She knew the task ahead required not just her knowledge of the magical arts, but also a deep connection to the spirit of the pot, which she had misused for so long. Udoma gathered her materials, each one a symbol of restoration and balance, fresh spring water, leaves from the sacred baobab tree, and petals from the forgiveness flower, which bloomed only once every year, known for its powerful healing properties. The villagers watched, a mix of skepticism and hope in their eyes, as she carefully placed each item into the pot. Magic of old, powers that bind, Udoma chanted, her voice steady and clear. Return what was taken, restore what was lost. The air around the pot shimmered with a gentle glow, the water stirred, and the leaves and petals dissolved, their essences merging with the magic. As Udoma continued her incantations, the villagers felt a subtle shift in the air, a change that was hard to describe, but impossible to ignore. It was as if a heavy blanket was slowly being lifted from their shoulders, a sense of lightness filling their spirits. Days turned into weeks, and each session with the pot seemed to bring more change. 
Those who had been healed by Udoma before reported feeling dreams of possibilities and futures they had never imagined. Old talents and joys began to resurface, and a renewed sense of vitality spread throughout Udali village. However, the process was not without its challenges. Each session drained Udoma, leaving her weaker as the pot demanded more from her than she had anticipated. It was a steep price for her misuse of its powers, a physical toll that mirrored the spiritual and emotional restitution she owed her community. During these times, it was Chaik who often stayed by her side, offering support. You're doing the right thing, Udoma, he would say during her moments of doubt and exhaustion. It's hard, but it's worth it. Udoma smiled weakly, grateful for Chaik's kindness. I hope they can truly forgive me one day, she murmured during one particularly difficult evening. They will, Chaik reassured her. They see your effort, your change. And they feel the differences in themselves. Trust takes time to rebuild, but it will come. As the weeks turned into months, the village slowly transformed. The air buzzed with new projects and revived ambitions. Children played with renewed zest, and elders shared stories of dreams that felt more vivid by the night. Yet, the true test was still to come. The final session was approaching, where Udoma would attempt to fully restore the last of the taken destinies. The entire village planned to gather, to witness this final act of restoration, which coincided with the annual festival of renewal, a time when Udali celebrated new beginnings and the forgiveness of past wrongs. As the day drew near, Udoma felt a mixture of anticipation and fear. She knew this would not just be the end of her redemption process, but also a new beginning for herself and for Udali. How would the pot react when all was restored? What would happen to her? These questions lingered in her mind as she prepared for what would be the most significant moment of her life. The villagers, meanwhile, discussed the upcoming event with excitement and a bit of anxiety. Many wondered what changes the final session might bring and how it would affect their lives moving forward. They talked about Udoma, too, some with admiration for her courage, others still with a hint of resentment for her past deeds. As the festival of renewal dawned, Udali was alive with energy and expectation. Decorations adorned every home and pathway, colourful fabrics hung from the trees, and the aroma of festive foods filled the air. Everyone sensed that this was not just another festival, but the beginning of a new chapter in the village's history, one that would be remembered for generations to come. As the sun rose on the day of the festival of renewal, Udoma woke early. Her heart was a tumult of nerves and hope. She dressed in a simple white robe, a symbol of purity and a new start, her hands trembling slightly as she prepared for the day's pivotal event. She walked out to find the village already bustling, children laughing as they ran between stalls laden with crafts and sweets, their parents preparing seats for the day's ceremony. Necker approached her, a reassuring smile on her face. Today will be a good day, you doma, she said, placing a supportive hand on her shoulder. Your hard work, your dedication, it hasn't gone unnoticed. Whatever happens, know that you have already changed many lives for the better. Udoma nodded, taking a deep breath. Thank you, Neka. That means more than you can know. Together, they walked toward the central square, where a large circle had been drawn around the magic pot, now sitting solemnly on a pedestal draped with vines and blooms. The villagers gathered, forming a wide ring around the area, their voices hushing as Udoma approached the pot. Chike stepped forward, carrying a small bowl filled with the last of the sacred ingredients needed for the final restoration. He handed it to Udoma, their eyes meeting in a silent exchange of solidarity and hope. Udoma took the bowl, her hand steady now, and poured its contents into the pot. The air seemed to pulse with energy as she began her final chant. Spirits of past and future, hear my plea. Restore what was lost, set the final threads free. As she chanted, the water in the pot began to swirl, glowing with a radiant light that grew brighter with each word. The villagers watched, spellbound, as the light enveloped Udoma, wrapping her in a cocoon of shimmering energy. The intensity of the moment grew, and just as it seemed the light would become unbearable, it exploded in a brilliant flash, sending a wave of warmth cascading over the crowd. A collective gasp rose from the villagers as they felt a deep, profound shift within themselves, the full restoration of their destinies, their potentials now completely untangled from Udoma's previous enchantments. As the light dimmed, they looked eagerly to the center of the square, where the glow faded to reveal Udoma, standing unharmed but visibly changed. 
Her eyes, once a deep brown, now shimmered with flecks of gold, a visible sign of the magic she'd wielded and the price she'd paid. Silence held the crowd for a long moment before the elder stepped forward, his voice echoing through the hush. Udoma has fulfilled her promise to us. She has righted her wrongs at great personal cost. Let us now embrace her once again as one of our own, not in shadow, but in light. Cheers broke out among the villagers, a sound mixed with tears and laughter, as they surged forward to envelop Udoma in embraces and gratitude. The festival resumed with a renewed spirit, the music louder, the dances more spirited, and the food somehow tasting sweeter. As the celebration continued into the evening, Udoma felt a peace she hadn't known in years. She realized that the village's forgiveness had gifted her something far greater than she had ever granted them, a second chance, not just at magic, but at life itself. And while Udoma knew her journey of redemption was far from over, and that new challenges would arise as she navigated her redefined role within the village, she also knew she faced this future not alone, but with the support of a community that had learned to trust her again. The festival of renewal ended under a canopy of stars, the villagers feeling the joy of their reclaimed destinies. As they dispersed to their homes, hearts full and spirits high, Udoma stayed back, watching the stars and contemplating her new path. The magic pot, once a source of deceit, now lay inert, its purpose served and its power spent, a solemn reminder of both the costs and the possibilities of power. As the night deepened, the stars above Udali village twinkled brighter, as if reflecting the newfound brilliance of the community below. Udoma stood alone, her heart swelled with a profound sense of gratitude and purpose. The magic pot, now silent and still, served as a testament to the transformative power of redemption and the enduring strength of the human spirit. In the quiet of the evening, Udoma whispered a vow to the gentle breeze, a promise to nurture and defend the harmony she had helped restore. Around her, the echoes of joyous laughter and the rhythmic beats of the celebration drums continued to resonate, weaving a tapestry of hope and unity. As dawn would mark the beginning of a new day, so too did it herald the start of Udoma's renewed life, a life dedicated to serving, learning, and loving within the warm embrace of her community. No longer burdened by the shadows of the past, she stepped into the light of her future, radiant and resolute. Thus, under the watchful eyes of the ancestors and the endless sky, Udali village found not just restoration but revival. In this small, vibrant corner of the world, the story of Udoma and her magical pot would be told through generations, a timeless saga of redemption, the power of forgiveness, and the unbreakable bonds of a community reborn. And so, with hearts mended and destinies fulfilled, the villagers of Udali thrived, their lives a daily celebration of the magic that dwells not in pots or spells, but in the simple acts of kindness and courage that define us all. In the end, they discovered that the greatest magic is that which transforms the soul, weaving tales not of individual glory, but of collective triumph and everlasting peace.